Here we go. Hey guys, I'm Kent. Welcome back to the Wood Metal Workshop. Getting going on Jim Crane Part 2 Finale. First up, we gotta cut the beam down to size. Milwaukee 8 inch saw had just enough cut depth to uh, cut this in two passes. Worked out really slick, gave me a nice clean cut. out the notches for the pivot tube just went ahead and traced the pipe onto the beam plasma cutter to zip it out of there for some reason it's way easier to follow a curved line than a straight line but we're gonna try the straight line anyways A little bit of grinder touch up here and be good to go. Stuff like this always needs a grinder touch up. here and finish it off. Camera makes it look like there's a belly in there, but the web portion, but there's not. All right, got to cut out the support plates that uh, reinforce the connection between the pivot pipe and the beam. It's a quarter inch plate. Plasma cutter made short work of this. Those aluminum rulers make great straight edges for this kind of stuff because they're cheap enough where if you damage it, it's not a big deal. Same with the aluminum speed square. Love those things. prep work on the standoffs here that go between the lower base and the mid base or I guess the lower base and the base whatever you want to call them I never came up with a name for them anyways grinding a chamfer on both sides leaving myself about a 3 16 inch land in the 3 h thick material hey guys sorry to interrupt the video but we've been asked to do another t-shirt campaign so we signed up with T-Blaster to get you these awesome shirts up to size 5x you can go to tblaster.com slash wooden metal workshop. Campaign starts on August 30th, ends September 20th at midnight, 2017. All the proceeds from t-shirt sales go right back into making more great videos for you guys. And I, we really would appreciate it. And uh, I think that's it. Back to the video. Finally, time for some welding. first one's always the tricky one. You want to get it uh, as plumb as possible and uh, get your tacks in there and make your welds and see which way it's going to move. Steel always weld. It's 
steel always moves as you weld it. So you want to make sure that, you know, you can uh, get a, know how it's going to react. Now that base plate is going to warp as well as we put all these in. Not a whole lot we can do about that other than uh, we, we could have done some stitch welding and let, given it plenty of time to cool in between and just uh, mitigated the stresses in it. In this case, because of the way that it's mounting, it really doesn't make a difference if there's a little bit of warp in there or not. We can adjust for that. And there's eight plates because there's eight holes. Six most likely would have been fine, but there, welding the other plate in. There it is, all done, ready to go. Now we're prepping up the pivot pin for its welding, removing any rust or scale or coating that might be on there. Same thing on the end of the tube itself. Now I'm just using some MIG wire to uh, space around there. I'm going to adjust the space so it's a little bit tighter fit. Uh, I left about a quarter inch sticking out. Give us a good land for the weld. A few tacks. We'll use a set of rollers here that would have made uh, life a heck of a lot easier. Could have done this in one one pass around, but in this case I decided to jump around a little bit. Use the MIG wire because it uh, won't affect the metallurgy of the weld. It's the same stuff you're welding with, so it'll just melt in there. little cleanup and we're gonna mark out for the uh, rosette or plug welds depending on where you're from what you call them these lines do not have to be perfectly uh, straight with the tube because we're going to drill them on the mill and uh, that'll keep a straight line and keeping a straight line is just an aesthetic anyways it really doesn't make a difference to the structure put eight in and now we're just gonna drill this out. I think we used a seven ace drill bit here. And I waited to drill these holes until the pivot pin was in there so I could drill down into the pivot pin as well and make sure those plug welds penetrated deeply into the pin. We also now have a Patreon. If you uh, care to, you can go on the homepage, click the Patreon button in the uh, upper right hand corner, and uh, give as little as a dollar a month. We'd really appreciate it. There we go, filling the, uh, the holes here. You just start at the bottom, make little circles all the way out to the top till you're completely full. And you like to do this without stopping, you want to do it all in one, one weld. gives you a better uh, better penetration and better appearance. There we go, all ready to go. We're gonna just have to clean that up before we paint them. The whole thing needs to be cleaned up before paint, so. But they turned out pretty good. They're just proud of the surface, just how I wanted them. All right, pivot tube to the beam now. I got the beam up on some little blocks so I can have a little place for a weld on the top side. See that here as I flip it over. There we go. Hold that in. Now I'm rolling it to do everything in as flat a position as I possibly can. That's always makes the welding easier. 
cleaning it up a little bit. There's those uh, support plates. Lots of tacks on these. Fashion, get a little more cleanup. Go on the other side. Clean up the other plate. Once again, just remove any scale or rust or anything that uh, might interfere with the weld. More tacks on the inside. And time to weld it all out. I did do a no-no here, and you'll see it in here in just a minute. I did a vertical dowel weld. Oh no, honestly, I, I welded the outside in the flat position. It's not going anywhere. All right, all done. Now we're cleaning up the other end of the tube. Don't buy cheap flap discs. These uh, five cent Norge discs I got. You go throw them like crazy. Even that's a, that's a 60 grit. Just take an awesome scale and wears them out. Buy once, cry once. Or in the case of flap discs, buy often, cry often. Depending on how much work you do. But the better a disc you have, the longer it's going to last. All right, just grinding a bevel on there. Got a quarter inch wall on this stuff, so left about an eighth inch. And there we can see that we've got it sitting up on a piece of eighth inch welding rod to give us a place for a root pass and get it tacked in here and since I can I'm gonna put it back up on the table and weld it there there we go better position you can be for welding the better your welds are gonna be it's all about comfort. So got that all the way around. Now we're just going to grind out that root pass a little bit, take off any high spots. And I just come in with a cover pass. Got about three eighths inch legs on this. Go. Now putting the gussets in. Just kind of made up a pattern here. Keep uh, warping to a minimum. Weld a bit here, weld a bit there. And I'm going to flip it over 180 degrees and do the same thing. And from 180 it'll go 90-90. And finally I'll put the last four in the corners. There we go, all mounted up. Uh, sorry I lost the video for us putting it in place. Here goes the beam, up and in. Oh, great. Forgot the washer. So, Kelvin's going to jump up here and get the washer. Holton and I will lift it back up. Washer, there we go. Pushing, washer, nut, tighten it up. Boom, she's done. You hear the crowd go wild. see the smile on my face it went a lot easier than I actually thought it was going to so back in beginning of part one I said I was gonna stencil uh, 300 pounds on here max so there's the stencil I cut out Got some yellow paint should stand out really well against the green don't put it on too heavy you're gonna drip it's gonna run uh, yep it ran and I didn't do the 300 pounds I did 500 pounds. When I turn it around here, you'll see where the it ran underneath the B. The first day. Okay, got some grease in there. I did put uh, four Zerk fittings, grease fittings in off camera. 
Now I'm going to wipe them off. Make sure they're clean and spin it around a little bit. So kind of spread that grease out. It doesn't quite clear the ladder for the loft. All right, Kobe's going to spin it around here for us. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This was a fun project. I'm glad I got to share it with you. As always, please uh, like, subscribe if you haven't yet, and comment. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.